Welcome to Eastern Film Fans, and with me, I've got award-winning director, Ranjit Esmoa, and um, as long as, as well as talented man, uh, screenwriter, producer, um, everything. Like the, the Robert Rodriguez of Birmingham, I think, uh, he's got his uh, fingers <laughs> in many pies. Um, welcome uh, and thank you for joining us today, Ranjit. Thanks for having me, man. Um... I followed Eastern Film Fans for a while, and I've seen all the great interviews that you guys have done, man. So I appreciate you letting me be a part of your platform. You, you are, you are too kind. Thank you very much. You, <laughs> I think, I, look, this has been long overdue. Um, we've been uh, collaborating for a while on on different things and stuff. And um, I was like, why have we not done this sooner? And I was like, yeah, go in contact with you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, it's great to have you on the show and stuff. And what I always do with my guests, it's um, it's a journey. Um, and I like to start the journey with you and, and where you are now is great. But how did you get there? Where did the passion come from, from filmmaking? What drove you to be, you know, the kind of person you are today, really? So what, how did that journey start for you to get into filmmaking? Uh, well, I was kind of always into films, so to speak, like a lot of people are. But um, my dad was a big uh, comic book fan. And uh, every weekend, he used to take me to the comic book store in Birmingham. Um, you must know the one near uh, New Street Station. And it used to be called Nostalgia Comics. Nostalgia, yeah, Nostalgia Comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Think they've changed the, I think they've changed the name. They now, have, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but every Saturday, it was there. Um, and I always used to get, like, the 99p comics and stuff. Um, and then back home, you always used to have the Batman animated series on. Uh, and he was a big fan of Terminator 2. So I kind of got into, I got exposed to that well if you want to call it a violent side of stuff at a very early young age <laughs> um uh thanks dad and uh, um and then i got into a lot of other stuff i got into um animation and game design i got into illustration at some point in my life i was a comic book artist as well um i went to university i studied animation and one of the courses in animation was to turn a live action short film into an animation so we had to go and shoot a short film and then try and turn it into an animation um, but I got so hooked on doing the short film, um, I just started doing that, and I started like not really going to classes and stuff. <laughs> and then what happened? And then what happened was, I think when I was nineteen, um, my cousin was in uh, college at the time, and, and he was doing media studies. And one of his assignments was to make a fake grindhouse style trailer. Oh, and because God. and because he had no idea how to do it, and he knew I was such a movie enthusiast, and I had some small experience shooting films before he was like can you just shoot it for me so i could pass this course i was like yeah no problem so i did that and that was kind of it i got bitten by the so-called film bug mm. and uh, at, uh i think 19 or 20 years old and i never looked back since that's pretty cool it's pretty cool i, yeah. I did kind of same at college for i think i put music over the top of film and stuff i did something and stuff and i used to i used to clip, clip all the um I used to edit all the fight scenes together with bruce lee and jackie chan and put them on tapes and vhs tapes and stuff and bring one right. and put music over the top of them i lived, loved all that edited stuff but then the um the money bug got me i needed to work and, and go out and spend time and you know usual things as a kid you just want to go out with your friends and stuff so yeah, yeah. i put it on the back burner and stuff but it's great to see you follow your passions and stuff and i'm going to take a gigantic leap which i know is a bit of a a, a bit much but we can all do, always do this again look behind me is, is rupture and i want yeah. to get to rupture because um I've got it signed here. Now, we did say it because we did the Q&A at Birmingham Premier, which well, I've got to say, and it's on YouTube as well. I'm going to put the links in um, the Q&A. It was a packed out house. It was yeah. it was jamming. It was rocking. Uh, and Rupture, um, that poster, actually, I did say I was going to give away as a price, but I kept it. And one day I might do. I just, I, I, I loved it. It's the original poster as well. But Rupture yeah. came about, but there's a story to it. And I know we jump because I know you're doing short films and everything else, but Rupture was a was a big one for me because obviously Mark Strange and then I was introduced to yourself and and the thing. But to get it to the screen, there was a bit of a journey there, wasn't it? From original what it was to to where it ended up. Can you just go yeah. through that kind of process? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's uh, so originally the movie was called Berserker. Yeah. And uh, Harold Asbury was attached to uh, play the lead role. Um, but for whatever reason, I think it just is- scheduling conflicts and stuff and um, just unable to get to the UK on time. Um, 
I was a bit of a frenzy to try and rewrite the project, repackage it, mm. and try and cast a different lead and make it something entirely different. Um, so I had a matter of what essentially what was weeks to try and repackage everything because the finance was in place and I couldn't back out of the project. Um, we'd locked pretty much everything. So we retiled it, Rupture. Um, I spoke to a few contacts here and there. Uh, I got recommended Mark Strange. And Mark, I knew of for a long time anyway, uh, just from his on-screen presence. Um, I got a hold of Mark's number. Me and him had a good chat. He had a good read of the script. Uh, he, thankfully, he liked it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then essentially, I think it was about four weeks later, we had the cameras rolling. Yeah. And, um, you know, he came over to Birmingham. We set up all the, the accommodation. Uh, we spoke about a lot of stuff. Uh, the three weeks prior, we had him in Manchester with some of the stunt guys going over all of the choreography. And um, I was getting sent clips of, of what they'd shot and how they were thinking of doing certain scenes. And I'd have my slight input on what I'd like changed. It wasn't a lot. I mean, a lot of what was in the original uh, pre previous designs have, has made it to the final cut of the movie. Uh, so kudos to the team that, that made it happen. Um and yeah, and then it and then it was literally I think about a year in post, um, mm. purely because because of all the VFX and trying to get the sound design right, and because we decided to go with a cyber cyberpunk aesthetic, yeah. um, and because I'm I'm a fan of the cyberpunk uh, cyberpunk aesthetic and just in general, and I love that kind of techno rave music, um, which Blade One had very well in the nightclub scene, yeah, so yeah. so I love that kind of vibe like th that's it's something that I have on my on my um on my playlist and stuff that I listen to all the time. So I wanted to put implement that kind of style into into a movie. And um it just so happened to be rupture. So we worked with the composers to try and get that kind of that thing right. And um we acquired some music from some from some artists um um from the other side of the world that were doing that kind of style of music. So we just tried to get everything right. And then we had the premiere. Uh, in Birmingham, I've forgotten the date now that we had it, but we had it, uh, and it was supported by pretty much everybody, uh, including yourselves, Eastern film fans. Um, and then it came out on streaming platform for a while, mm. uh, and and then it went to Cannes, and uh, it got picked up by a distribution in Cannes. But the distributor took so long to get the movie out; um, it kind of essentially lost its hype, so to speak. So what I'd basically done is I stripped the movie back, and um, refreshed everything, gave it to an even, even bigger distributor who could do the movie, its due diligence, and get it out correctly. Uh, so now that is with the distributor. So I would assume pot potentially by the end of the year or beginning of next year, the movie will have a full worldwide release as it should have been intended. That'd, that'd be awesome. Look, the, the posters on my wall and stuff, I might give it away and stuff when it comes out as a bit of a thing and stuff. We'll see. If I can let go of it and stuff, you'll have to sign something else for me, mate. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> if you love, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you love cyberpunk, martial arts, that's what Rupture is. It's a, it's the, There's one of a kind. It's unique for me, you know, cyberpunk, martial arts. The other thing I think we need to talk about, and you've made a good point in reference to, shot in Birmingham. Now, you don't think yeah. of Birmingham as, as the place to be, but, you know, we know Spielberg's done it because he'd been over here and stuff. Was it? Did you yeah. always have it in mind for Rupture for Birmingham? Was it a place that, you know, you wanted to, to shoot in? i tell you what, Phil. So anybody on your channel that is obviously, they're very familiar with action movies and everybody's, yeah. familiar, with the, everybody's familiar with the director of The Raid, Mr. Gareth Evans. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan of Gareth. I've spoken to him a few times and met with him face to face. I know all the people that he's connected to. Yeah. And um um and one thing that he loves doing, and I have noticed this with him, apart from the raid one and two, most of his movies have been shot in Cardiff, where yeah. he's from. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I thought, you know, when he, he, he's very smart. He doesn't like to go out of his own out of his own city. <laughs> he did. I interviewed him as well, mate. He's a yeah. lovely bloke. He's, 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 yeah. Great bloke, but you're right. He doesn't. He he yeah. knows where it's at, which are the it's very clever yeah. stuff. And you're doing the same kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, and the reason behind that is because you're born and bred in a place, so you kind of know everybody. You know the places. You kind yeah. of know how to swing deals and get the yeah. locations that you want and make certain things work. And prior to doing my first movie, Exile, the Chosen Ones, I spent twelve years shooting everything in Birmingham, so I knew all the locations. 
I knew how to get hold of things. So I was like, well, we're going into feature films. It just makes sense to shoot everything back here again. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. So, so, um, so that's what we did. So we shot in Birmingham. Uh, I knew the, the location that I wanted. Um, you know, I, I knew the specific type of nightclub, the nightlife where they had all that neon look. And um, so we went and, and we went and made a kick-ass movie. You did. You did. Now, yeah. you did some other those. You did Spring Lakes and you did Dig Me No Grave. And yeah. I probably might revisit that. We might have a talk about that. But I think you, you brought up XL, The Chosen Ones, again, um, which was awesome. And it was awesome for a number of reasons. Great cast, great crew and stuff. You brought it all together. But Sonny yeah. Pang... Sonny Pang was there all of a sudden. That must have been nice to work with someone like, you know, Sonny Pang, Headshot, you know. It was yeah. it was, it was was good to get him. I mean, you know, it's international stars now you're talking, that you're bringing in some yeah. yeah, it was crazy because that was yeah, my yeah. first official, legit uh, feature film. Yeah. And it, it wasn't only did I get to work, uh, work with the great Sonny Pang, who, um, who I've, I've been on record saying he, he's become one of my mentors and big brothers. That's and I can always I can always speak to him, and he gives me so much advice, yeah. uh, just career wise and just in personal life in general. Uh, so I take him after Sunny, um, and I absolutely got the utmost love and respect for him. Um, and so he's he, he believed in the story, he believed in me. Uh, he came on board, and not only were because of Sunny, we were able to get um, Hannah Al Rashid uh, from the Night Comes for Us in the yes. movie, yeah, and. And on top of that, because I was working with them too, I was also able to get Oka and Tara from The Raid 2 uh, in the movie as well. So for my first feature film, I worked with three massive stars. Yeah, it was it, huge. It was huge. Yeah. When I saw the name in the category, I was like, oh my God. And it was just like, wow. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I would have been in awe of stuff. Look, you've got a job to do as a director. And I just want to just focus on that maybe a little bit. Your style of directing, how would you... How would you um, see yourself as a director because i know you shoot fast and stuff which is great from production point of view because you know yeah. time is money as somebody once said and stuff but yeah. what do you what do you how do you see yourself as a director what kind of director are you i know you've had influences i know all the big but you you've created your own kind of um yeah. a being as you as so what kind of director are you it's a it's a good question, bro. I mean, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't really give myself a certain style. I think my style yeah. is my style. It, yeah. It's a it's a combination of all of the influences that I had over the years. So yeah. you know, you know, there's directors like Nicholas Winding Ref and David Fincher, um, yeah. you know, Rodriguez, Tarantino. There is it's a bunch of everyone's style, mm -hmm. really. I yeah. mean, can can anyone really say that this is my original style? No, yeah, I don't exactly. think so. Because exactly. because everyone everyone is stolen from somewhere. You know, yeah, in the most respect, true. in the most respectful way. I mean, my my so called trademark shot is when um, one of the characters sticks a gun into the the barrel of the gun into the camera, and you know that is taken from a lot of other movies. You know, Tarantino's done that from Pulp Fiction to Reservoir Dogs, and you know, for me, that's like my standout shot, and I love doing that. And I've cool. I think I think I've done it in every single movie since. <laughs> uh, that's it now. Now everybody's going to have yeah. to find your movies and find the shot. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's that's yeah. a challenge to people, but that's cool. Look, we need to talk about what's upcoming, um, and we have to talk about ballistic, um, for a couple of reasons. One, thank you for letting me be a part of that for numerous yeah. reasons. But um, can you give uh, the fans an understanding of what they can um look for in the upcoming film? ballistic yeah sure i mean so about, ballistic, yeah. yeah ballistic was born kind of out of necessity um because one of uh so we didn't have a great experience on on the last four films with a particular individual um so we kind of in the most respectful way we distance ourselves from them and to try and see if we could do it ourselves yeah which we proved that we could with ballistic um but because of certain things that happened and certain things that taken place, um, pretty much the majority of our funding was stripped from us. Um, so we got together a small budget. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got together a small budget. Uh, for some reason, I love writing scripts with a shit ton of people that probably sometimes don't need to be in the movie, but. <laughs> I always try to keep it one let's let's make a movie in one location with two actors and then by the time I'm done with the script it's like 50 locations and 100 actors we'll come back <laughs> to the script thing because I want to ask you about that but let's go on the ballistic journey first yeah, yeah go on 
so uh, yeah, so it, it's essentially is a it's it's a good revenge thriller about a um, about a homeless veteran uh, who learns that his sister's killer has been released from prison earlier than expected, which uh, which then unfortunately taps into a side of him that he has kept dormant. And he goes on a essentially what is a killing spree to take revenge for his uh, for his fallen sibling. Um, but yeah, we shot the movie in uh, in six days yeah. uh, with twenty three with twenty three actors, ten locations, and four crew members. <laughs> and uh, and a lot of that yeah. is uh, is a uh, is because of the fourteen years of coming from nothing. And shooting with no budget, shooting with nothing, and learning just how to make things work, and and we did that with ballistic. We took all of that fourteen years of experience and we made ballistic, but with all of the experience that we have now behind us, uh, which hopefully is much better, and you know with the four features that we've had behind us with a big budget, so we took everything we learned from having no no money to having money, and then making them mesh together, making ballistic, and. Um, we had, you know, fantastic cast on on the movie. You know, there's 23 actors. I won't name all of them, but there was David Lamont, James Bryan, Christopher Trell, of course, your lovely daughter Poppy Mabel, um, Carl Carl Wharton, and you know, a host of other great actors. So we basically, essentially, what I want to say is we had a family unit, not yeah. only with the casting casting crew, but you know, with all of the people that supported the movie, because we crowdfunded the movie on Indiegogo on a small portion of the budget to see if we could have the support of backers. Uh, you know, we had yourself come in as one of the producers, uh, Daniel David Thomas, um, Stephen Smith, and the whole host of other people that came in and supported the project. So I want to say thank you to everyone that supported us on Indiegogo. And um, because if it wasn't for those people, if it wasn't for yourself, the movie would still be basically just in the idea stage. Um, so thank you again. Um, but the the other good news is uh, we shot the movie in six days. Yeah. Uh, and the way me and my missus work, uh, Charmaine, is we, we uh, a bit of psychopaths. We don't take rests. So we ed- <laughs> I did the notice. <laughs> yeah. So, so we edited the whole feature film, complete, professional, everything. Right. And probably 22 hours. Um, and that was the full edit, the sound, and the grade. And the movie is now getting uh, scored by one of our composers, Simon Cilio, and uh, is getting sound designed by uh, one of our good friends as well. So the movie should technically be 100%. We're on 99% finished at the minute. We should be 100% potentially by Monday. Um, but we have already started the DVD pre-sales. Yeah. Um, with the movie and this is the first for everybody this is going to be the first for everybody to know this i yeah. haven't mentioned this to, i haven't mentioned this to anyone so the movie has been acquired by a distributor uh based off of our trailer alone wow uh, because they love the trailer so much wow. um so the movie has been acquired by uh, a distributor for a uk release awesome. uh mainland europe and the baltics with the us coming soon cool. and and also, also, yeah. it's not set. In, it's not set in stone yet, so you can keep this in the interview if you want. I won't uh, tell anybody. Go on. Okay, but we have a theatrical release for the movie worldwide, uh, uh, nationwide in the UK. On. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's get break the internet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you just you're killing me. You're killing me. Uh, no, I'm. What I want to say is fascinating to get a little insight into to how uh, it works and how you work and, and how it was. It was, it was frantic and stuff, but everybody knew yeah. what they were doing. Charmaine was there, setting everybody up, getting everything. The cook was there. He was involved. Everybody mucked in. I love that about independent. You know, you read about it and stuff, but to be on set and witness it, it was great. And, you know, you work like clap work, even though I did come in and disturb you in one of your scenes and stuff, and I was ushered in. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, um, <laughs> one of those, one of those. Um, but, um, look, I, I think um, the cast and everything else, we want to shout out, and we should shout out, obviously, David Lamont, because um, his first lead role as well, and it seems to me that he was just 
born to play that role. You know, when you just get it, when you, there's just someone yeah. and he's been in things before and you, you, you can see the, the craftsmanship and what he does. And I've always been yeah. a fan. Did you have him in mind for this to play the, the, the lead and stuff? Cause like I say, he just seems to fit that particular role. Uh, Ballistic was written for David. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I had I had nobody else in mind for yeah. for the role. And awesome. if you if you if you turned it down, I'm gonna shot the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and 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 you know we touched on a lot of PTSD issues, and um, uh, it, well, issues is the wrong word. It's like uh, I to rephrase that. It's it's not an issue. It's a it's a condition. Yeah. Um, and it's um. He uh he he just he knew exactly what to do. You know he he mm. suffered loss of very close friends to him during war, and and it affects your mental health. And if, uh, essentially, the film is about PTSD, mental health, um, but it's masked over as a revenge thriller, um, you know. But we but there are there are moments in the movie where we do touch on those topics because it is an important topic to touch on yeah. you know people try they try not to talk about mental health too much but it it, it is a thing and yeah, but it's not something good. we try to we try to shove down people's throat and, you know it, it's just it's a part of the story and you know how how people deal with it in in their own ways you know it, it's purely on them but we tell the story of beck who was played by david lamont and just his way of dealing with it. I'm not saying anybody with mental health issues or PTSD deals with certain situations like yeah. this. No, it's brave to do it as well. It's brave to put it out there. I and mean, you're absolutely right. And mental health issues is where we, you know, everybody kind of suffered it in some shape or form when the COVID came around and stuff. Um, and we yeah. need to look after each other. So it's it's good that the message is in there. Anyway, fantastic performance from David. Like I say, I witnessed some of that and I could see the passion involved from everybody on the project. And yes, um, maybe I'm a little bit biased because Poppy Mabel is there. Bless her. What a star. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, fantastic crew, the way everybody works together. The links will be down below. Um, if there's any DVDs left, you know, it's down below in the link. I don't know if there'll be any, but the trailer's there as well and everything. A couple more things before we go. Screenwriting, we talked about it just, just a little bit. For those that are looking to write for the screen, is there any um, hints and tips on um, how you do that? Um, because obviously you've you know, written so much now. So, is there anything you yeah. can take advice to people? For me, I have 101 ideas under the sun, but until <laughs> until one doesn't click, I won't bother yeah. writing it. Yeah. And then yeah. even and then even if it does click, and I start writing it, I'll write and write and write until I've lost the passion for it. And if I lose the passion for it, I know it's not the one. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so. So I'll then go back to the drawing board and just read it. I mean, I know Aaron Sorkin has a ritual that he does and he'll take multiple showers throughout the day to, and he'll change his clothes throughout the day to get him to a different mindset. Yeah. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have um, the, enough bills to pay or ready to pay for multiple showers a day. Um, so, <laughs> so, they are water. <laughs> yeah. It's all so, going to end the movies. <laughs> yeah. So, more so DVDs, that's... folks. Come on. We need to give the man a shower. <laughs> Um, no, he's fantastic. Now, I just want a little insight because I need to finish, polish off my script that I've been writing for, for ages. Um, it's called Enter the Ball Ring. Basically, it's a martial arts tournament in Birmingham, Into the Ball Ring. I've been chatting Scott Adkins on it forever and stuff, and he said, no, it sounds great and stuff. He says, but nobody's going to... Um, go to see a movie that's set in Birmingham. He said, everybody wants to be in London. All the, all the finance want to be in London. That'd be that. Of course, we're into the ballroom. Come on. It's like into the dragon. Except he's just set in Birmingham. We need a martial arts tournament movie. All right. Enough jokes. The serious question is, and this is a question I ask everybody I interview. Um, drum roll maestro. Wait for it. If you're stuck on a desert island and you can only take three films with you, it can be any genre you want. What three films do you take? The Raid, The Night Comes First, and uh, Raging Bull. Oh, my life. Just just no hesitation. Boom, boom, boom. Some people go, <laughs> oh, I don't know. And, uh, and I've had different ones. You know, I think um, Benny Chan did uh, Jaws or something. I was like, wow, Jaws. I would have thought you had done a Hong Kong movie and stuff. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Different people have different ones. And, look. If we interview again, and let's face it, we probably will do, you can pick a different three. So yeah. <laughs> fantastic choices from me and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's it from us. Um, like I say, we could talk all day, and I'm sure we will talk more. Ballistic, look out for it. It's coming soon. All the details will be down below. Ranji, 
thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Uh, and I wish you well in your next endeavours. Is there anything you're working on coming up um, after Ballistic you want to hint at? or? Yeah, next month we start on a, an action thriller called uh, Thicker Than Water, um, which is the drug cartel movie. Um, we're shooting that one up north. Uh, yeah. And then at, after that, I have a... I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but it, there is a big, a big movie with um, that I'm doing. I'm telling <laughs> you what, I'm getting all the juice here. People are not going to like it. I was just giving away everything. I'm going to stop him here before he gets himself yeah. in trouble and Charmaine drags him away. Um, but, um, Ranjit, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you. Um, I wish you all the best for the future. I'll be watching that journey very closely, indeed, obviously. And uh, I wish you all the best, mate. Thank you so much again. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all of your fans as well. Um, you know, whoever's the very minute people that supported my work. Thank you so much. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but Phil, again, like I said, thank you for having me on your platform. Been a fan of you for a long time. Prior to us even knowing each other. So I appreciate us becoming good friends and allowing uh, Poppy to be a part of our film and for you Thanks. coming on as a produ producer as well. Thanks, so uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. Cheers, mate. Take care.